Hello, everybody. I'm Albert Vartanian, and this is Fast Money Football on the Parlay and Parlay Radio. And Champions League is wrapped up for this week, so it's time to look ahead to everybody's favorite tournament, the Europa Conference League. No, I'm only kidding. Nobody cares about that. Sorry, Leicester fans. It's the Europa League round of 16 playoffs that kicks off today. There's a bit of a new format. Try and stay with me here. As always, the second stage of the Europa League welcomes the teams knocked out in the third place of the Champions League groups, which I'll never understand. So you get bumped up from the Champions League to go into another tournament for a chance to win the Europa League trophy. Work that out. Anyways, the eight teams who dropped down from the Champions League were drawn against the eight runners up from the Europa League group stage. So eight teams will move on to play the eight seeded teams in the round of 16. My sidekick today, Michael Singh, Big Mikey. You can see him everywhere on the parlay. He's the co-host of Toronto Today. He talks everything Toronto FC and Canada soccer. Mikey, did I explain that? All right. Uh, good enough. Good enough, Albert. You, you always, figured it uh, out, right? Yeah, exactly. You always give me a nice intro and yet another one, man. So happy to be here once again, chatting some, some footy with you, some exciting games on the horizon. I mean, I can't think back to a Europa League that really had some of these matchups in it. And I think that there's a good reason for that, right? Yeah, there is actually a little bit of excitement around the Europa League, which is rare. People don't want to tune in on Thursdays. I mean, as a Spurs fan, I went through the Europa League for season <laughs> after season after season. It just sucks watching those games where they got to travel, you know, to the depths of Russia, to the Ukraine. And nothing against those countries, against those teams. It's just when you're used to seeing them in the Premier League and you've seen them in the Champions League, you don't want to see them, you know, in the Europa League. But they're not even the bottom tier anymore. It's the Europa Conference League. I saw Spurs play in that. That's even worse. But anyway, let's not talk about that. Let's continue with the Europa League. Yeah, some massive ties. Some massive teams. I mean, Barcelona and Napoli, they're playing together. That's a match we would usually see two teams like that playing in the Champions League, but they're playing in the Europa League. But let's start off with the futures. So far, Dortmund plus 550 to win it all. Sevilla behind them plus 700. Barcelona plus 800. West Ham 12 to 1. Lyon 14 to 1. RB Leipzig 14 to 1. Napoli 16 to 1. Um, I'm not sure about Dortmund as the favorite. They wouldn't be my pick. But what's yours? I mean, was it the, one of the first times this team is ever in this competition? I got to go with Barcelona. Uh, they have the experience of playing uh, high-pressure matches. They have the experience of playing in, in European leagues and, and striving. Obviously, a, a lot of success in the Champions League. Albeit, it is a new Barcelona squad. But I can't imagine they've dropped off so much where they're not a serious threat to win the, the Europa League. They've kind of turned the corner on uh, on their season. And I don't know if, if they're on the uprise right now, but they definitely look better than, than when they started the year. I think Xavi has a little bit more of an imprint on his squad right now. And I, I think Barcelona at plus 800 is, is a good value there considering you have like Sevilla and Dortmund ahead of them and the competition around them, none of them screaming a, a team like, like Barcelona. So I got to go with, uh, with the Spanish giants over there. I completely understand going with Barca. It's, it's just difficult for me to back them. They're a team in transition. Yes. They've done some, I think great business uh, over the January transfer window, bringing in Triore. I mean, they brought in Ferran Torres before that, uh, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, a uh, Danny Alves to bring in that veteran leadership. Who's actually not in the Europa league squad. He didn't make it. Uh, he was cut out. Uh, for some other players, so I completely understand that. I mean, Barca, they always deserve a shout in whatever competition that they're in because they are Barcelona, but it's tough to, for me to back a team that's in transition. My pick is a Spanish team as well from La Liga, Sevilla, 7-1. to one. I wish the odds were a bit better, but 7-1 to one is still pretty good. One of the best defenses in Europe, and as we know, Mike, with anything, any sport, especially here in soccer, you need a good defense. You need to keep the goals out of the back of the net, especially in knockout football, and Sevilla seemed to do that really well i think they've conceded only 16 uh, and i think the best right now is manchester city with 14 and they've done it four times in the last eight tournaments and they've also done it with the current manager julian lopetegui they can score they can defend and they have that pedigree in the tournament so i like sevilla plus 700 let's talk about some value plays because there are some good teams on the board with some big odds and you like one of them yeah i, I like rb's at leipzig a lot um this is a team that does damage in the Champions League when it can get in form and they have a lot of a lot of value on their squad, a lot of lesser known commodities perhaps, but they're still very, very um good, strong players. I mean, 
going down the list, there's there's a number of, of talented guys that I think can make uh, the difference on on a day, and they play that style that, I mean, nobody really wants to play them. You think about someone like a Christopher Nkunku, who one of the best players right now, one of the most up-and-coming valuable players in the world right now. Danny Olmo, Andre Silva, the list goes on and on in terms of perhaps lesser-known names, but still very, very good pieces on a team. And I think a team like that can potentially make a deep run. They play a really high-pressing style of game. Which, uh, you know, in Europa League, if you're not giving your opponents room, space, it can translate uh, into success for your team. And at plus 1,400, I think that's just a stab worth taking, especially when, when Leipzig get in form. And they, I, again, I think they look like one of the most dangerous teams when they are in form. Very similar to Dortmund, eh, Mike? They have high press, they can score goals. Just at the back, there's a bit of an issue. But um, yeah, I like that as well. I'm going with the Portuguese side, Porto. Plus 2,500. I saw these odds. I'm like, listen, they're better than this. I don't think they're getting the respect that they deserve uh, because they were dumped out of the Champions League. But another very good defensive team who can score goals. And they went deep. Don't, don't forget, in the last Champions League to the quarterfinals, they knocked out Juventus in the round of 16. And they lost 2-1 over two legs to Chelsea, who ended up winning the thing. So there's a good team there. They have some veteran leadership in Pepe. And they have goal scorers all across the board. 16 different goal scorers this season. So you have the defense and the goals. I think uh, you can make a run in this competition. Plus 2,500, take my money. You throw 100 on that, 2,500 to return. But because they're a, a quote-unquote value or a long shot, I wouldn't hammer the 100 if you don't want to. You can keep it to a lower stake, like a $20 bet, something like that. So my pick, Sevilla, and my long shot pick, Porto. For Mike, you love Barcelona at the top, and RB Leipzig is your long shot pick. Let's get into the game. The marquee matchup of the, of the round has to be Barcelona, Napoli, Barcelona minus 106 against Napoli plus 300. Two teams who should be in the Champions League, but they aren't. I think there's goals in this one, Mike. And how do you see it playing out? Yeah, I, I do think there is goals in this one. And this is probably the most intriguing matchup of, of the round of 16 there. Um, Lorenzo Insigne, listen, I've, I've watched a lot of Napoli uh, because Lorenzo Insigne is obviously going to be making his his, room, his move mm -hmm. over to Toronto FC, and they're, they're a very good side. Uh, Koulibaly is a world-class defender, in my opinion, there. And then moving up the, the roster, you obviously have people like Irving Lozano and, and Dries Mertens and, and, again, Lorenzo Insigne, who all have that game-breaking type of ability. Axel Twanzebi, he's a guy that Manchester United loaned to to Napoli, and he's he's a young talent, but he's he's very good as well. So, just looking down their roster, they're super talented. They play a nice possession style of football. Obviously, that's the Barcelona mentality. That's the Barcelona mo. So it's kind of gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how these two teams clash at at Camp Nou there. Yeah, I actually. Cool. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go no. Go ahead. I was going to say, getting Koulibaly back from AFCON is huge. I mean, you get one of yeah. the best defenders back, and now he enters uh, this knockout competition. He just came from one when he won with, with Senegal. So defensively, uh, they just went up a notch for sure. Yeah, exactly. So I know it's going to be a tough fixture at, at the Camp Nou, but I could see a scenario where Napoli, who are playing some really good football right now, they haven't lost in their last four games. They haven't lost in their last five matches away from home. They've won four of their last six games. I could see a scenario here where, where Napoli pull off, um, I guess, a quote-unquote upset. I'm not 100% sold on them picking up the result, especially with the new away goals rules rule kind of jumble there where you know there's not much incentive for teams away from home to kind of go for it as much. So with that in mind, I'm, I'm going to take Napoli, but a draw, no bet at plus 186 is where I saw them at. So I think that's some good value to take kind of a lower risk, uh, higher reward kind of play. Yeah, I can see a 2-2 type of game here. I'm going to stay away from the winner's market as well. I mean, Barcelona, they've definitely improved, but, you know, they struggled last weekend against Espanyol. Espanyol went down to 10 men. They needed a late winner to rescue a point. Um, but, I mean, over the last, what, 11 games, they haven't lost over 90 minutes. So there's definitely improvement there. Um, but yeah, I'm staying away from the, the, the winner's market just like you. I'm going for goals. I mean, there's too much firepower on either side. Aubameyang, Torres, Traore, 
uh, for Barcelona. On the other side, you have Mertens and Signe, like you were mentioning. Victor Osimhen is back. Uh, so, so many players on either side who can score goals. And defensively, there's issues uh, specifically for Barcelona. They can't keep clean sheets. They concede, but they can score. And both teams can do the same thing. So I'm going over two and a half, Mikey, minus 118. Those issues at the back for Barca, I think, are going to be too big. And Napoli is going to score some goals here. And then just on the other side, like I keep mentioning, Aubameyang, Torres, Traore, that's a heck of an attack. That, that's a lot of pace. Um, and if, if Napoli go down one early, they're going to have to open up and I could see some more goals from Barcelona. Let's move on to the favorites, Dortmund. The favorites in this tournament, they're minus 225 against Rangers, plus 550. Mike, I found this one so difficult to break down and find a pick because I want to back Dortmund. I'm not laying the minus 225. At the same time, I can also see them slipping up because they concede so many goals. How do you look at this one? It's it's tough to get a read on. I mean, these are two teams who have actually never played each other uh, prior to 2003, at least dating back all the way there. And um, the Rangers, they're, they're an interesting squad. Uh, you think of someone in the heart of their defense who has come in since, uh, since Stevie G. Um, mm took over there and that of course is, is Scott Arfield and Canadian former Canadian international I guess let's call him because he did announce his retirement yeah. he's an important piece of that squad and this will get to be a good really measuring stick for this team because they don't get to face competition like Dortmund too often I don't know if they have what it takes to break down that Dortmund press and defense is kind of where I'm at in this game I, I think they need to prove it to me and I think on the other hand, when you look at Dortmund and you look at some of the players that, you know, they have, I mean, come on, you're, you're talking about some of the best players in the world right now with, with a Marcus, Marco, uh, with, what am I saying? Uh, Marco with Royce. Royce there. Yep. Yeah. Marco Royce, um, yeah, Jude Bellingham as well. A tremendous, tremendous talent. I don't know if they're going to have Gio Reyna or, or Erling Holland tonight. But I still think they have enough potential and talent to go out there and make a difference um, just on paper. So I'm going to be taking Dortmund here. A really interesting bet. It's something I don't think I've done before. But it's going to be a result. And both teams to score, I'm going to say no. So I'm thinking Dortmund keeps a clean sheet and picks up the result at plus 150. I can't back that. I think Dortmund could definitely win this game uh, because they have the better team, obviously. But... I mean, I'll never second guess their, them at the back. They're just horrible, especially at home. 18th place, Armenia in the Bundesliga have a better defensive record at home than Dortmund. They're just, I mean, they're so entertaining to watch for that reason because they can score goals, but they concede so much. So there can be a lot of high scoring games. We look at Rangers. I mean, they scored in all but two uh, Europa League matches, second best goals in the Scottish Premiership. And you can say whatever you want about the Scottish League. This team is still scoring goals. And when you come up against a team, who concede, who leak goals at the back. I don't see why they can't. So I'm going both teams to score minus 110, almost even money. I think it opened at even money, which would be even better. Um, but yeah, you know what? This is one of those games where you can see, you know, a 3-1, 3-2, something like that. But you all, you can also see a 2-0. Like you're mentioning, you're going both teams not to score because that's just what Dortmund are. And uh, I mean, playing at home in Dortmund is a huge advantage for a Scottish team to go over to Germany to play in front of that, the, the yellow wall in front of those fans. It's going to be very difficult. I think uh, we can't underestimate the, at the atmosphere. And you mentioned it earlier on, getting a rid of the away goals really hurts teams like Rangers because they really rely on those things. If they can go into that game, you know, sneak a goal, 1-1, one, 1-0 one, one, and go back home and hold down the fort, then they can get through. But now they can't do that. It really changes a lot. It, it does. It does. And, as you said, I think this is more so a hunch just based on, you know, Rangers. I don't want to say inexperienced. So they definitely have a lot of experience. They're a story club and all that. But going into Dortmund's a, a different type of game, a different type of atmosphere. And it could either bring out the best of you or it could bring out the worst of you. So we'll see kind of how that plays out. I just know one thing's for sure. And I'm with you there is Dortmund will find a way to find the back of the net. Man, I'm looking forward to these Europa League games. And I never thought I'd ever say that, but I really am. Next up. My long shot pick to win the whole thing, FC Porto minus 120 <laughs> against Lazio, plus 350. Another fantastic fixture, Porto, Mikey. Absolutely dominant in the Portuguese first division. Unbeaten, six points clear. The big question is, do you think they can transfer that type of form into the Europa League? 
I think they can. I, I'm I'm a real strong believer of Porto. Uh, and that's not just because they got my boy Stephen Estacchio. <laughs> Dude, I was about to say. I'm like, I wonder why, Mike. That That's not just the reason. I mean, this is a team that in the Champions League, we know what they've done, let alone here in, in the Europa League and against a side like Lazio, who, I mean, no disrespect to Lazio, but they're not one of the elite uh, Serie A sides, in my opinion. So Porto, who haven't lost in their last 12 games, they're playing at home. They haven't lost in their last seven home matches. I mean, they, they seem to have faced off three times since 2003, and Porto's 2-0-1 in those three matches. And I think Porto's even gotten better uh, over the years. They just have such a, an a intriguing style of play that is, is kind of different from a lot of teams. And I don't know if a lot of teams know how to play against a side like Porto. Um, they're going to bring, like I said, a lot of experience playing in these European competitions. And I think they, they could really get up for these types of matches. So I'm going to be taking Porto actually straight up on the money line in this one at minus 110. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm taking Porto as well, minus 120 on the line. I mean, there were better odds in the open at plus 105. I wish I jumped on it a little earlier, but they have fantastic home form. Only two losses that they have came in the Champions League, and that was against Atletico Madrid and Liverpool. Tough opposition. But listen to this crazy stat I found. There have been 13 red cards shown across their last nine home games in all competitions. Talk about a fiery side. So we can see cards in this one. I never really dip into the card market, but if you want to, maybe lean towards Porto players getting more cards uh, than the Lazio guys. Uh, when it comes to Lazio, six in Serie A, four points out of the top four, but it's just their away form that's been so poor. Lost six of 13 away league games and against the big dogs. For some reason, like they just can't show up. Six matches against teams who are higher in the Premier in the Premier League, in the Serie A table than them, they picked up just two points. So there's an issue there. They don't show up to these big games. And if you're coming into the Europa League, you're going into the Estadio Dragao in Portugal against the best team in Portugal, you need to be at your best. And I just don't think they will be. And I know you agree with me. Porto, minus 120. If you can find better odds there, I would jump on it, eh, Mikey? 100%. 100%. I'm with you for all the reasons that you listed. And as you mentioned, Lazio doesn't, get up against these big teams. I mean, I just don't think they're good enough to, to compete with the big teams. I don't think there's anything more philosophically behind that. I just <laughs> I just think there's a big gap between them and some of the bigger clubs there in Syria, let alone the rest of the world. So we'll see if that holds true today when they take on uh, Porto. And again, what a what a slate of matches we have. It's a treat today. Yeah, and, what, and sometimes it's just black and white, like you just said, Mike. It's just some teams just aren't good enough and some teams are better than the others. And Sometimes when, it's, when you're looking at it from a betting perspective, that's all you really need to look at. The better team is going to beat the team that's not as good, and that's why we like Porto. Time to transition to the CONCACAF Champions League and the Hamilton Forge, the first Canadian Premier League team to play in the CONCACAF Champions League. They lost yesterday to Cruz Azul 1-0 in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, Mike, a loss is always difficult to take, but this is a big step for Canadian soccer, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's that's the main takeaway there is – a massive, massive step for, for the game in this country. I mean, Forge is a team that didn't even exist four years ago. Mm. And to see them really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cruz Azul at Tim Hortons Field, how Canadian is that? <laughs> um, that That's special for the game in this country and to kind of a testament to, to the direction that the sport is heading as a whole. I mean, no one would have thought of one of our teams, and we can say that because they're fully Canadian. They are our team would be up against the uh, Cruz Azul in the CONCACAF Champions League. If you were to tell me that would happen four years ago, I would have laughed at you because that was so far-fetched. But yesterday they made that a reality. And not only did they make that a reality, they held their own, in my opinion. Um, of course, Cruz Azul dictated and dominated a lot of that match. Um, it wasn't Cruz Azul's strongest squad. But at the same time, I mean, a 1-0 defeat is nothing to, to hang your head up because of, of the difference between the two squads. I mean, Cruz Azul is one of the favorites to go on and win the tournament. Nobody really expected Forge to be there in the first place. So I thought they did really well to come away with just the one nil um, defeat. And hey, they're going to be going to, to the Azteca and they're going to go into an environment which I don't think they've, they've faced before. And for a Canadian Premier League squad to be playing a meaningful match at the Azteca, that's another significant step there in, mm. in Canadian soccer. And I think they're only going to grow and develop from this because, you know, Bobby Smirniotis, he's a, he's a smart man. 
and he's a very talented coach and he's going to take away if not a result but something something perhaps more meaningful and that's the experience and I think uh, I'm really proud of, of Forge and how far they've they've come and what they're doing and what they're showing out there. And regardless of the result come next week, I'll I'll still be uh, holding my head high just to say that we had a Canadian Premier League side in the CONCACAF Champions League against the Cruz Azul team, who are, again, one of the favorites to win the entire thing. You know, making it to the Azteca, is set, they're setting the bar high for themselves. And now that's where it is. That's where they have to be, um, you know, season after season and that's great and it's great for canadian premier league it's great for grassroots soccer in canada uh, a lot of good things happening in canadian soccer right now so the reverse fixture is next week in mexico on february 24th like you mentioned at the azteca it doesn't matter if you're an inexperienced team an experienced team established with pedigree this that and the other going to mexico it's very very difficult um how do you expect them to fare in, in that type of atmosphere yeah that's 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 the thing it's gonna be it's gonna be tough yeah. I think for I think uh, Cruz Azul is going to put out probably a little bit stronger of a side than they put out at Tim Hortons Field away from home. Obviously, they're going to be in front of home fans and the Azteca. It's no joke. It's it's no joke. I I hope uh, I hope they they show up well and you know this Forge FC team keeps kind of defying odds and defying expectations. They they went on and and performed really well at the Concacaf League. Now they're in the Champions League, and I. I'm nervous about it, but at the same time, it's an experience that, you know, it's, it's just good no matter what happens. So I, I wouldn't really expect too much from Forge, but then again, don't be surprised if this team finds a way to to raise a few eyebrows and turn a few heads and maybe come away with, with a, a draw or something there at the Azteca. I would love to see that. And Canadian fans, make sure you support February 24th, Hamilton Forge against Cruz Azul in Mexico at the Azteca. All right, let's recap the picks on the show, starting with Mikey Singh, he likes Napoli. Draw no bet, plus 186. Porto straight up on the money line at minus 110. And results in the Dortmund game, both teams to score, Dortmund to win, and both teams to score is no at plus 150. And his pick to win the tournament, Barcelona, best value pick, RB Leipzig at plus 1400. For me, I have to go back and remind myself because I have a short-term memory loss, clearly. <laughs> Uh, Sevilla is my favorite to win the tournament at plus 700 in the Europa League. Porto plus 2,500 is the big dog. I like over two and a half goals in the Barcelona-Napoli game. That's at minus 118. Shop around. You can find some better odds there. Dortmund Rangers. I like both teams to score. I'm going against Mike here. Minus 110. And Porto, I'm with Mike. Minus 120. I got the match. If you can get him a minus 110 or better, go out and get those odds. Mike, thanks so much for joining me. Great show. As always with you, if you want to watch more Parlay content, guys, please head over to Parlay.tv and follow us on social at The Parlay. Good luck.